Hey everybody, it's me Stacy here at Scrapbooking Made Simple and it's time for our next Saturday with Stacy YouTube class number 362. <laughs> Now, I've got a whopper for you today. I do. I have Aladine, new product from Aladine. In fact, we may be one of the first, if not the first in the United States to have it, and maybe one of the first in the world to have it. So new product from Aladine. I've got product from Creative Expressions, where you may already have this product or something very similar to it that you might be able to use. I have got Ozzy Andrew and Couture Creations foils on a special for you and a technique that I don't know if it's out there yet or not because I don't watch other people's YouTubes. So I, I haven't heard or seen a demo on it like at a show or anything like that. So I'm hoping that what I have to show you if it is already out there and it may be done a completely different way than I'm doing it or, I, you know, I don't know. I'm hoping that it inspires you because it took me a while to figure out how to do this. It was not like, oh, easy peasy. I, I, I know exactly what I want to do. This took thought on my part where I'm used to just, I'm used to just coming up with ideas and then seeing if it worked. And that's what happened. I came up with this idea and I thought, okay, this is the way it must work. If I want it to work, this is the way it should have to happen. And I did what I thought was going to need to make it work. It didn't work. I was not expecting that. <laughs> I thought I had it all mapped out in my head. So then I had to go back to the drawing board because you know what happens. You know when you see something in your head and you want it to look that way or you want it to work that way. and and then it doesn't, you're like, oh, but I, uh, God loves a trier and I refuse to give up. So I'm a trier. So I just kept working at it and working at it and working at it until I found the solution that worked best for me. Now, like I said, somebody else may have done this technique and came up with a different solution that worked best for them. And if that's the case, well, then you have multiple ways to get the same effect. What's wrong with that? Who doesn't love having multiple choices? <laughs> so I have got just a really fun class for you today. We are gonna start very um, easy. We're gonna start at the beginning and work our way through and get harder and harder as we progress until we get to the last technique, which again, we'll see. You're either gonna love it or you're gonna go, you wasted all that brain effort on that. <laughs> I, I, I am an A-type personality. I have to finish. I have to see it through. <laughs> so I'm going to, we're going to get started in just a moment. I also want to say that today is September 10th, 2020. I'm filming this on a Thursday. I always do. It loads the night during the night and then sat on Saturday morning is when it premieres and taping it early lets me then actually live chat with you on Saturday morning because I don't have a moderator. And so today being September 10th, 2020, it is, it really is, today is the day of my 25th wedding anniversary. So I wanna wish my husband a very, very happy anniversary. For those of you who have been around for a little while, you know around this time the last year, well, a week from now actually, um, Michael had open heart surgery and suffered a massive stroke. He's not, he's, he's, and anyway, he's, he's young. <laughs> At least maybe when I was 13, I didn't think 55 was young, but now that I'm going to be 52, I think 55 is like a baby. So he's young and he had it when he was 54, a massive stroke and open heart surgery. So there were several days after the surgery where we were not sure that Michael was going to be okay and that he was going to make it. And of course he did. He had no other option. <laughs> <laughs> Failure was not an option. <laughs> so he has, he, he's walking and talking and making me smile and laugh and every now and then annoying me to all ends. But I suppose I do the exact same thing with him. So yeah, it's been a, it's been a long time coming. Uh, I've known Michael since I was 13. We met in high school. I was a freshman. He was a senior. I had no interest in 
him. I didn't even know who he was until we were on the soccer field playing soccer and he did something he wasn't supposed to. He, you're not supposed to slide tackle an opponent from behind. He did, my face landed up in the grass. I had grass in my teeth and in my hair. He held his hand out to help me up like the gentleman he was. <laughs> I had a few choice words for him in all the 13 year old moxie I could I could muster up. <laughs> Told him what he could do with that hand of his. <laughs> and that is how we met. He says we met earlier, but I don't remember, so it doesn't count. <laughs> then one day I needed a ride home from school. I had missed the bus and this was like a week later and he was there and I knew he had a car and he was a senior. And so I said, hey, you, you, the kid, who put my face in the grass. I need a ride home and you're the guy to do it. <laughs> See, I even had, I had, uh, <laughs> nothing's changed much. <laughs> so on our way home, I figured out that he lived, um, basically he lived down the street from me. I had no idea he lived down the street from me. And from that point on, I had a ride to school, ride to uh, and home from school every day <laughs> because who wants to take the school bus when you've got a senior with a car who listens to Barry Manilow it was like oh. <laughs> so the poor guy even when I would borrow his locker I mean I just became the little nuisance that I was at 13 to him being a senior in high school then he graduated and went on to uh, a local community college here and first day of school there I am sitting there waiting for him to take me to school too <laughs> just because he graduated didn't mean I have to go back to the school bus no <laughs> so he would take me up to high school and then he'd head off to to college God bless his pea picking heart and at 14 years old I told him I was that he was gonna marry me one day I told him this is it I'm your girl you're gonna marry me and and he would pat me on the head and say, oh, aren't you so cute, but you need to shoe now. <laughs> You're crazy. <laughs> Maybe a little bit, but I was right. <laughs> so it took him a little while to come to that understanding that I was right and that we were meant to be together. I knew it. I knew we were meant to be together. And eventually, well, eventually we got married. We had kids. We had houses and cars and jobs and and ups and downs and and moments where we we held on to each other for dear life and moments where we celebrated each other's accomplishments because really that is what marriage is it is accepting somebody for who they are helping them to see who they are to struggle and share and explore and guide and teach and celebrate them it's it's all of those things it's it's acceptance and and grace and hard work and respect and trust and struggles all of that goes into a marriage marriage is not an easy thing it is not it takes work and so to say that we've made 25 years is a blessing. One, because he is still here. And two, because, well, frankly, I am still here. <laughs> I am an A-type personality and I know I am not the easiest person to live with because I get something in my brain and it I cannot let that, that thought go until I finish, which is why we have this YouTube today. So, so I just want to say to my husband, I am so proud to be your wife and I am so blessed to have you as my best friend for the last 39 years. I've known you more than I've known anybody, really. So, so today is a blessing that I have you and that, um, that we have our family and that we can look back and see a life well lived whether it be through the struggles and the heartaches or the joys and the blessings, we have had a life well lived. So happy anniversary, Michael. I love you very much. Now, for the rest of you <laughs> who are like, <laughs> she really that mushy? Listen, 
when you've got somebody as amazing as I have who has put up with everything that has gone on in my life, you bet I'm mushy. <laughs> now I have winner, winner, chicken dinner. How about that? <laughs> I have two winners from last YouTube 361, which was the Angela Pool dies, the slot and spin, right? Amazing dies, sold out like that. I tried to warn you. I told you they were limited. Angela Pool and her husband, they're this teeny tiny company, just like us. We are, we are soul sisters, only they manufacture and I'm a retailer. Other than that, we're the same. <laughs> And I was so happy that all of you really embraced what she did with those dies. And hopefully they'll, I don't know if we'll ever get them back in, but if we do and you're on the notify me list, you'll get notified. So, um, so I'm just, I was thrilled that, that everybody embraced her because, and her husband, because they are good people just trying to just, and they're young. They've got little ones, you know, maybe, maybe six, six and five and six. So I see, I, I see my life. So anyway, okay. So winner, winner, chicken dinner. You both have won a $25 gift card. Don't know what you're going to spend it on. And with any luck, I have put that $25 already in your account online. If not, while I'm doing a live chat right now, I'm bopping over to, <laughs> to our website to put that $25 in. But for a chance to be a winner winner, all you have to do is hit the subscribe button. It's down somewhere around here. It's a heart, has SMS. If you move your cursor over it, a subscribe bar will come up. You just click that and then you can post a comment on this YouTube and you, we pick two winners every week. You just never know when it's going to be your turn. And who doesn't want $25 to spend on some wonderful goodie that they've always wanted, but just couldn't justify buying, right? Now you can. So our first winner, winner chicken dinner from last week, which was 361, which was the Angela Pool and my new Simply Defined Satin Papers. Our first one is K. K. Jemison. I'm going with Jemison. Jemison? Je yeah, no. K. do you care that I didn't say it right? I probably didn't, but really, does it matter? No, because you're a winner, winner, chicken dinner, and we are all celebrating you right now on the live chat, which was Saturday morning. If you're watching this Saturday morning, yay! <laughs> People want to know, why do I do this early? Because I can't live chat and teach at the same time. So, <laughs> so I tape this early. So then on Saturday morning when this premieres, I can be focused on the live chat. Our second winner, winner, chicken dinner is Judy. Judy Tolk. Hello, Judy, is that you? Are you saying no? Really, yes, it's you. I know, it's pretty rock star. Judy and Kay, you can't go wrong. You both have just won $25 to Scrapbooking Made Simple and you don't have to do anything to claim your prize. Like I said, if I'm on top of things, I've already put it in your account and if I'm not on top of things, I'm heading on over right now to do it for you so you can have a good time spending it. So congratulations. I hope you are doing the winner winner chicken dinner dance. Follow along. You're a winner. Chicken dinner. You're a winner. Chicken dinner. Wahoo. Kachu for you. Congratulations to the both of you and who knows the rest of you. Next week is another week and it may be the time that you hear your name. Now I'm going to tilt on down. We are going to get started today. Like I said, I have new product from Aladine who did those three dimensional stencils, which were amazing. I've got creative expressions. I've got couture creations. I've got deco foil. I've got a little bit of everything to show you. And I, we're going to start easy and progressively get harder until the last technique where I, that's the one that just, I just would not give up. And for a reference, just so you know, we are almost done bundling all of the Marabou fashion liners. And that went with all of the lovely Christmas collection and adventure collection from Couture Creations. That will be the next YouTube that we start working on. We are any YouTube earlier than that. We are processing and shipping those out right now. So appreciate all of your understanding. Our store is still closed. We still are a skeleton crew here at Scrapbooking Made Simple and will continue to be so until COVID-19 in LA County comes down and we still are on the highest watch list. All right, let's 
let's take a let's tilt on down and we'll get started for today and um and like i said with mr sms michael i love you to death and you make my heart happy dude you just do okay i'm gonna tilt on down bye and we're gonna zoom on in He's like, really, did you just call me dude? I'm like, well, yeah. <laughs> Remember, I'm younger than you. <laughs> I'm going to get zinged for that. <laughs> That's okay, right? <laughs> okay, so I want to show you this card first. Can you see the stamped image or the image on the back? I think somebody said those are, gink are those ginkgo leaves or ginkgo flowers. I'm not sure. They're just pretty. Isn't that a stunner of a card? The stamp is a new stamp called Doodlers from Aladdin. But wait, this card is using the exact same stamp. Beautiful, right? Two totally different looking cards using the exact same stamp and some of them and the exact well they think that foil might be in there too so pretty so pretty i wanted you to see that you're only you're only limited by your imagination and that you can certainly make different looking um, projects even though what you own maybe you only have three stamps I don't think anybody would think that these two came from the same stamp set, but they did. They're beautiful. So I'm gonna put those back and I'm gonna tell you, so I've got six doodlers. Now I'd like to think that I had something to do with these being manufactured because I saw these in a different size stamp and they were just too big, too big. So I said, oh my gosh, I would certainly love to have these, but they need to be in a size that's a little more accessible to the U.S. Post Office here in the States and not in Europe where they don't get charged for bigger cards. I mean, they get, they're big. So Keep It Cool Kevin went back and said, oh, Stacy would like these smaller. Do you think we can do these smaller? And by George, they did. I love that they have the hole in the center ready for your sentiment. I will tell you though, and when you get yours, you will see, it says doodlers um, can be used with our doodler stamp sentiments. I don't know if it'll zoom in. It says it right there. I'm going to tell you right now, I didn't bring in the doodler stamp sentiments. As much as I love these, I didn't like those. <laughs> They were not my favorite at all and so I said no I think we're gonna pass on those but I love the stamps <laughs> so you're gonna need to put your own sentiment in or of course I've got sentiment stamps that we do exclusively with uh, a stamp Hendis, or you'll see a lot of our samples what we've done with the empty space so that you can use them. And then the last one is the cherry blossom, which is beautiful. So I think today I'm going to start with these two, the cherry blossom and this bohemian flower. And so I think I'm gonna take this off and this off, put these over here. I wanna tell you, and I think I'm gonna stamp with it first. I wanna tell you when you take the liner off, it may be sticky. That is just stick. They're just sticky. The stick will eventually come off. It doesn't hurt the stamp any. It's not on this part at all. It's on the, the outside of it. And since you're going to put it onto a block, or maybe not, and you, it's so sticky, I might be able to just do it from here. <laughs> but eventually this will, it'll tack down. It'll still stick to your, your block no matter what. Um, I just don't want you to get it and go, oh, what is that? They come sticky. I have no idea why I asked and I didn't get a response yet. I think that's just part of the manufacturing process is that getting that liner on there with the color, it just is a little sticky. If it stops sticking to your block, if you're using a block or your stamp press by Couture Creations or your Misty or whatever you're using, then you just 
wash it with some some mild dishwashing detergent like Dawn or palm olive and get all the hand oils off of it and then it will stick again now like I said I think I'm just gonna start super easy and I'm just gonna stamp this image so I'm gonna take some memento ink and I'm just gonna stamp it up now I haven't used this stamp before so usually I'll stamp off a couple times and what does stamp off mean that means it takes maybe there's a little film on here as well so I might just take some copy paper do I have any copy paper no I don't but that's okay take some paper now because of the size of the stamp I'm gonna go ahead and just put my paper down to it I could pull over my gush pad put my paper on my gush pad and stamp this way it's whatever you're most comfortable with if you've got your stamp press of course you're going to be stamping with your stamp press it's whatever works for you but this is a really big block for me somehow I grabbed my really big block so um, so I wanted to I think I'm gonna go ahead and just stamp with it facing me so I'm gonna take my paper I wonder if I can even do it this way. I wonder if I can get two that way. Ooh. Down and a nice back massage. Just a nice little rub. Make sure you got the whole thing. If you're using your stamp press, then you don't have to worry about it because you'll be able to just line it right back up and stamp again. But if you don't have a stamp press, sometimes this is a little easier. It's gentle on your hands as opposed to trying to push hard. Not bad. So there's my image. Pretty stamp. You've got the center here, which now you can put your, and of course I could, gosh, this is almost an A2 size card. Uh, you can put your sentiment in here. I could go in and color all of this with uh, colored pencils and some Gamsol, or I could palette paint it with my Tombow markers. It really is up to you what you wanna do. I also did the liner off. I also did the cherry blossom, which is really very lovely. It's a beautiful stamp. Love this stamp. And of course you could stamp it in colors. I mean, there's, there's lots to be done with it. If you've never stamped it before, I just wanted to give you an idea of what you would be doing if you were to buy these. Do you even need the block if you're stamping upside down? No, I probably could have put it right there, inked it up, and because I'm stamping upside down, Now let's see, if I don't, let's try not to um, cover the first one. Well, I think I came close, but we'll see what I did. Good press, and notice I'm not pressing with the tips of my fingers. No, I'm pressing with a flat hand. If you press with the tips of your fingers, you're likely to miss a spot, but if you press with a flat hand, no problem. Oh, wow. Well, it was really close, huh? <laughs> now I could fold it and make a book at it. I could fold it and that could be my card base. Okay, that has options and possibilities. Not what I had intended on doing, but Wahoo could chew. I've got options to do something with that. All right, I'm going to clean my stamp. And being that this is a rubber stamp, um, all you really need is your baby wipe. Okay, now let's get a little bit trickier. Not something that most of you haven't already seen, but for those of you who are new to crafting, who are just trying to dip their little toe in and see if this is something that they're going to like, I wanna give you a technique that makes you successful. And I think I'm going to play with I'm going to start with the cherry blossom and I don't even no I don't even need my block I'm not even gonna bother with my block Put my block over here 
Yes, yes, okay. So I'm gonna start with my cherry blossom and I'm gonna pull out my essentials glue pad. What is an essentials glue pad? It's a two-way glue. And this is not the only two-way glue I'm gonna be using today. The, both of them that I'm gonna be using are different but the same. Different but the same. These are both two-way glues. What's a two-way glue mean? Well, it means that when you use it and you glue something to it, if you glue something to it while the glue is still wet, if you were to take a piece of paper and put some glue here and then glue it together and the glue is still wet, it's going to glue those two pieces together just like you wanted. But if you leave it and you don't put anything on top of it and you let it go tacky, it gives you the opportunity to put something else on top of it like a glitter. It's beautiful and it's so easy. Now, the most important thing to know about the Essentials Glue Pad is that it is sold. It's sold like this. See? This is not a re-inker. You don't get, your pad is completely dry when you get it. Don't be surprised, it's gonna have nothing on it at all. You do not then empty this entire bottle in here thinking that six months later you're gonna come back to use it and it's going to be fine. No, this is your glue. This is the method for getting the glue onto whatever you need to get it onto. This is not a stamp pad. This is your glue, and this is the method of getting it onto your stamp, your paper, whatever it is you're gonna be doing. So this is not a re-inker. Now, this is my glue pad. It's not pretty, it's kind of yucky, and I'm fine with it. The glue pad lasts, for me, forever, unless it really gets, I mean, it, it, you, I can cake on, um, glitter on here and embossing powder it makes no difference to me and you can see it's tacky 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 if I had emptied this entire glue bottle on it and then came back a three or a month later two weeks later it would be this tacky and this is not what you need to be able to use it that's how it's gonna be when it's you know kind of in after you've used it and you've let it sit for a little while let me wipe my fingers off or I'm good. No, no, no. Doris will kill me. Did you hear me, Doris? My paper towels just dropped on your pre-made help Stacy out samples. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> I need to take the glue bottle and I need to only put as much as I need for the project I'm working on on my pad. Zoop, zoop, zoop. Sound effects required. That's all I'm gonna put on. I'm gonna kind of spread it around a little bit. Spread it around a little bit. And that's all I'm gonna use for right now. I may have to add a little more later, but I may not. We'll have to wait and see. I'm gonna take a piece of white paper. Oh, I've got a piece of white paper all ready to go. Happy day for me. I'm going to put my glue right on my stamp. Does this hurt the stamp? No. Is the glue water soluble? Yes. Do you need to wash your stamp? Um, with this glue, you can get away with a baby wipe. You don't need to put it in a, uh, a tub of water, or go to the sink and rinse it off. You're fine. A baby wipe's gonna be fine. Okay, so I think I've got some glue on there. Looks good to me. I'm gonna take my paper and I'm just gonna put it right down on top and give a little back massage. That look good? All right. Oh, I got a little black in there, but that's okay. We'll live with it. There must've been, I must've, oh, I did, I stamped black and didn't clean it off well enough. Now, I'm hoping that you can see the watermark of where that glue is. I need to set this aside for a few minutes or I need to waft it. I need to let this go tacky. If I was to close it up right now, it would glue to each other. I don't want it to glue to each other. I want to add glitter to it. 
And I think I'm going to take the other one that I did, the, the kind of Bohemia flower one, which is beautiful. And I'm gonna, I haven't added any more glue. Let's see if I've got enough to make it work. If I wanted to do a third one, I may need to add more glue. That looks pretty good. All we can do is try, right? It's only paper. Now, this time I'm gonna use black paper. It's only paper. If it doesn't work out, I'll flip my paper around and do the back side of it. Let's see if I add without adding more glue. I am using 80 pound cardstock, nothing special. This, well, it's nothing. It's my cardstock, but it doesn't have to be my cardstock. And, oh yeah, look at there. Can you see that? That's perfect. That looks great, huh? So, I'm going to set this one aside, and we're going to come back. I'm going to put my lid on, because I'm notorious for not doing that. And you see my pad's kind of grungy and yucky. Don't worry about it. Once you've used all the glue that comes with the, the set, you can buy this just all on its own. You don't have to buy the pad again. They sell just the refill for this. So once you've used all the glue that comes with the pad, don't buy the pad again. Just get the refill, save yourself half the price. Okay, so. I'm gonna put this off to the side. I'm gonna bring this one back over. Oh, I do get black stuff in there. Mm -mm -mm. And now I'm gonna play. So I have got in front of me uh, Cosmic Shimmer Glitter. Um, what do they call these? It's it's uh, something sparkles or sh shimmer. Is it shimmer? Sp I can't see it anymore. Shakers, sparkle shakers. That works, sparkle shakers and it is a micro fine glitter. That means this glitter is almost like dust. I mean, it is, it is so fine that it is almost like dust. Microfine glitter is getting harder and harder to find. It really is, but it is my favorite glitter because this is the glitter that will hold on to those fine little details. Glitter, all glitters are kind of the same. What makes them different is how ground they are. So it's kind of like coffee grinds. How, how fine do you want your coffee grinds? Well, how fine do you want your glitter? Obviously, a glitter that is micro fine, it's going to take more to fill this bottle than a chunky glitter because the chunky glitter is going to take up more space. So, so you're going to have to manufacture more to get it in this bottle. But a chunky glitter won't let you hold on to the details of a project because it's just too fat kind of like a chunky embossing powder and a detailed embossing powder. Same thing. So Creative Expressions makes their sparkle shakers and they have beautiful colors. I love the little tip on, I love the little way that it applicators, it's in the little shaker bottle as opposed to, we used to take little spoons and tap, 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 tap. Now we don't have to, we've got this cute little sh salt shaker. And I can, I think I'm gonna use this one first. Uh, maybe not. Well, maybe I can just go around and ever so gently start to add some glitter. And when I mean a little, you can always add more. But look at it, it looks like I haven't done anything, but that's all I'm going to start with of that color. Then I'm going to come in and maybe add a little bit of my green. And again, less is more. You can always add, but once I start to blend this, I can't put it back into one of these bottles because I will have commingled and 
mixed the colors together. You can certainly make a hodgepodge jar of glitter without question, but the goal is to have very little glitter left so that you don't even have enough to make a hodgepodge. And then I think I will use this purple. And let's go around maybe a little bit on the inside and just a little bit. And then I think I'll finish it off with a pink. So I really have just dusted, truly dusted my paper. But because I gave it a little time to get tacky, like I'm giving this one, this one I'm giving even more time. You've got plenty of time. You've got a good 20, 30 minutes before you have to do anything. But you gotta give it at least two or three minutes. Then I can start taking. And I'm not rubbing hard. I'm just dusting the color over. And where I have stamped, my color is coming up. Where that glue is from the stamped image, my color is coming up. The glitter is holding to that glue. And I can tell where I've got little spaces of not enough, where it's still a little tacky. And that's when you go back in and you just drop a little bit there and maybe a little bit down here. I can tell you that it's got a little bit of, you can feel the tack left over because I didn't have you know, quite enough, but then I can take it. And now that I've added a little more, it will fill in all the spaces that were tacky. And the idea is to have very little glitter left. So this is a mop br or a makeup brush from the Elf line, um, Target, Walmart, maybe even the Dollar Tree. That's all the glitter I have left. And I used almost nothing out of my jars but it makes so pretty. And all the detail, I didn't lose the tiny flowers. I didn't lose the little leaves. You can still see the branches. You can't do this with other glitter that isn't micro fine. On a detailed stamp like this, it just won't work. And then of course, I know you all would use a trimmer, I know. But what if I just freehand this on down? And then it's totally up to me what sentiment I want to put in the middle of it. Or do I have a die cut that I want to die cut out the center of? And once that glue, once you've got the glitter on it, this is, oh, there's my hand. This is not like, oh my gosh, no, I'm going to open it up. It's going to get everywhere. No, uh-uh. This is glittering for those who do not like to get messy. That's what this is. That glue lets you glitter. I wanna wipe my hands off so that you can then, so my hands, right? It's dry, it's done. And it's beautiful. 
so pretty. But what about on black? Will it work on black? Okay, I've had this one. It's been sitting over there all the time I was doing this, right? It's been sitting over there all that time. Now let's use the same colors just so we can have a comparison. They won't look exactly the same because it's not the same stamp. But let's drop some of drop some of my color down. And what's nice about on black is that you can see where your flowers are. You can see where your leaves are. You can see where you may want to drop a special color. So I can move this around and kind of get a feel for where some of the flowers are versus the leaves. And then let's do the pink. And maybe just a little bit of the purple. And less is more. Less is more. And then I can even just start like moving that glitter around and my image will start coming up. From that to that. What do you think? Those of you who know how to do this know that it is a aha moment when you take the glitter because it looks just like a hot mess there. But what do we think over here? Beautiful, right? And I just keep moving it around. Now, again, I'm not rubbing so hard. I'm just taking my finger to move the glitter into place. And then I can take my makeup brush and kind of gather it and move it all around. And then you can see how much glitter I have left, which isn't even enough for me to, I, I mean, there's just, there's nothing there. So if I wipe it off, So pretty. And the detail in the stamps is what really makes that pow moment. If you're doing um, a stamp that is kind of an outline, you know, like an open stamp that you can color in, it's pretty, but there's a lot of negative space left because you're supposed to color it in. You need stamps that have more detail to them so that glitter can find those beautiful fine lines and then hold to them. It can find the beautiful fine lines and then hold to them. So pretty. So do you already have an Elizabeth Crafts glitter? Her glitter is micro fine. Um, Stampendous used to have micro fine glitter. If not, your micro fine glitter with uh, with creative expressions. It's beautiful and I wanna say they have about, I don't know, maybe 18 colors and it just is lovely, lovely, lovely. Okay, so I think I'm gonna put those aside and I do wanna take, I do wanna take this one here. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to glitter it up because I want you to see what happens if you only use a color of glitter. Maybe you don't want to mix and match. Maybe you just want a color of glitter. Let's grab my 
stamp pad again, my glue pad here. I know I don't have enough on here to make it go. I know I need to add a little bit more. So put a little zhuzh, 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 zhuzh. There we go. Finger. And ink, 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 or glue, 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 glue. And again, this is a two-way glue pad. So let's do one in white. And we'll do one in black. There's my image. Hopefully you can see it. I'm gonna go ink your glue, 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 glue. I'm gonna grab my black paper and do it in black because perhaps you've only got three colors of glitter at microfine glitter at home. I don't want you to think that you can't do this with whatever supplies you have. Use what you've got, and then if you wanna add colors, maybe you have two Elizabeth Craft glitters, and maybe you have two Stampendous colors, and maybe you'd like to add two of these colors. Hopefully I've got enough on there. But if you're not, if you don't have 20 colors to choose from, that doesn't mean you can't do this. Okay, let's see if I got it. Oh, yeah. See? Looks good. Okay, so when I'm going to take my cover and put it on my cover, and I'm going to close up all of my little glitters. Ooh. And close up. I think I'm going to use maybe those two. Or maybe I just use one. Maybe I just use the green. Okay, these, those two, let's go here. All right, so I just stamped this. I need to waft it or give it a few minutes before I try and use it. I'm not gonna hyperventilate. But I am gonna give it a whirl and see what we get. All you can do is try, all it is is white paper. So I'm gonna stick with my green and I'm just gonna drizzle green around. Again, the goal is to end up with very little glitter left over so you don't waste any. And then I'm gonna throw some of this goldy brown in there just because I can. And see what we get. Okay. <laughs> How'd that work for you? <laughs> I haven't even rubbed it yet. <laughs> Talk about Wahoo could chew. <laughs> Oh, I know I'm gonna need a little bit more. <laughs> that was pretty cool, right? <laughs> it doesn't take much. And then that impression just comes to life. And again, this is for this is for glitter. People who are not crazy about glitter because they don't like the fuss and the muss. I get it. They don't like glitter all over their hands, all over their floor all over their uh, workspace. Got it. That's what I'm left with. Now pay no attention to me because Mr. SMS's floor in his office, <laughs> well, it's got a little glitter going on. It's, it's, it's glitter without necessarily the pow. It almost has a foily look to it. And then let's do it now that this one has had time because this one sat longer. Same thing. And again, I can kind of see where my leaves are here. And let's just drop some glitter. And 
and maybe a little bit of my brown, my goldy brown. So kind of a hot mess. You see that definition come up? And I haven't even touched it yet. <laughs> Makes my heart happy. <laughs> now I can take my finger and go back and put it where it needs to be. And it is those fine lines that you are looking for. Move it all around, make sure I've got glitter everywhere, and then wipe it off. And it is that fine detail, those beautiful fine lines that you want. You need detailed stamps to make these work. And these are beautiful. And then it's a matter of, do you like it in the white? Do you want to put it on green cardstock? You could. You could stamp this on anything. That detail is what you're looking for. And that's what you get with microfine glitter and highly detailed stamps. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, now we have to move on. Let's wipe off my craft mat. Bam, glitter done, right? Look, mom. <laughs> okay, it's time to move on. And now we're going to use a different two way glue. It's still two way glue, but it is different, and you you cannot use the essentials glue pad for the next thing I'm going to do. It will not work and I'm going to show you why. I'm going to grab a piece of black paper. So essentials glue pad, the glue, thin, consistency of, I don't know, a royal icing maybe? but definitely a higher water content as opposed to the Duo Transfer Gel. It's actually more like a paste than a gel. Honestly, it's definitely more pasty than jelly. Um, yeah, definitely more pasty than jelly. And it is, a, it is a, an adhesive and it will work just like an adhesive if you want it to. But look at the difference of the consistency. Look at the difference of the viscosity. Look at how thick this is. Far less water content than here. Both two-way glues, absolutely. And I used this with the Aladdin 3D stencils. And it's beautiful. Really, it's beautiful. If you haven't seen that YouTube, go back. It's magnificent. Do you need both glues? I don't know. What do you want to do? This is, this is a better glue if you are looking to stamp and glitter. This is a better glue if you are looking to stamp and foil. You will not be able to stamp and foil with this glue. And this glue, well, it's, it's a little harder to stamp and glitter. So, let's pull out a stamp. Let's use this one. My ginkgo leaves, because they're so, I, I hope that's what they are. I have no idea what they are, but that's what we're gonna call them. How about the, just the pretty leaves, or the pretty flowers? Okay, so, to start, you do not take, in fact, I'll pull this one over. You do not take, or I do not take, this paste and try to apply it to my stamp. I don't sit there and try to take a dauber and daub it on. 
um, a sponge, a makeup sponge to get it on. No, I don't do that. It's going to get into the creaks and cracks of your stamp. You have to stamp into this, this, this gel paste, this duo that holds foil magnificently. So the first thing I thought of when I wanted to do this was, well, I'm going to go find an empty stamp pad like this, only empty. And then I'm going to apply here on here so that I can do this. Did not work. Huge epic fail. Tried five different stamp pads, could not get it to work. I mean, and I, then I tried, okay, well, I'm going to brayer it on to my stamp. Nope. Epic fail. Did not work. I'm like, okay, there has to be a way. Where there is a will, there is a way. And yes, God loves a trier. So I am just going to keep on trying until I figure it out. Now, I'm going to want to put this, after this YouTube, in some water and scrub it out. If I forget to do that, is it going to hurt the stamp? No, if you leave it in there and you forget, you just have to go soak it again and scrub a little harder. It will not hurt your stamp. This gel does not hurt your stamp, nor do you have to use any kind of heat to make it work. So then I had this idea. What if I just stamped into it? Not using a stamp pad at all. What if I took my gel and I put it on my craft mat? Now, we take <laughs> we take a gift card and kind of smooth it on out and spread it around. Gift card seems to work beautifully. Do I have enough on there? Maybe if I go this way. Yeah, if I go this way. Okay. So I've got it on my craft mat. Probably should have put it to one side and not the other, but let me put my white paper. Well, you know, we'll just go for it. Okay, so I'm going to press in. Now, I'm not chest compressioning it, but I'm not gingerly pushing it either. I'm pressing in, just like I would if it was ink. Then I'm going to peel it up and I'm going to take my paper and I'm going to put my paper right on top. And I'm going to rub just like I've been doing. Peel it off, and my image is there. I'm going to put this to the side there, and I'm going to bring over my little palette knife. I've got more here. I can either scoop this up and scoop it up and put it back into my tub because that's all I need. You don't waste. Scoop it up, put it back into your tub, or I can put it back down and do another one. And I like my little credit card. You guys may have a, a tool that you already have to do, um, uh, to use your pastes with. For those who don't, credit card works great. Just kind of smooth it out. I have decided that Doris and Claire and I and Elena can Venetian plaster now. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna just give this a quick 
just a quick wipe to get some of it out just with a baby wipe and this time I'm going to do black paper so then I'm going to put it back in give a nice little press all over Pull it up. Now, if any of you can figure out how to get this impression up without smearing it, because this is a perfect mirror impression, but if you put a piece of paper down on it, the minute you press, it smooshes. It may, I, there ha, I'm not done. There must be a way to get this off of there so I can get the negative. I have not given up on that. I continue to think about it at three o'clock in the morning. It will come to me or one of you will tell me, and then we will do it. Okay. So good all over. And pull. And you can see your impression. What is different? You know what? Let me scoop this back up. What is different about this than the glue pad that I was using is that you must give this some time to set. This isn't a three minute waft it and go. Because it's thicker, it takes it longer to dry. So you have to be willing to just set it aside for a little bit, uh, 20 minutes. If you do a whole bunch of these and, uh, and then you'll start again. Let's get a wet one. Wipe it off my mat. Again, water soluble. Thicker, yes, but still water soluble. And you can see my mat's not going shh, 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 shh. That's because this is my craft mat. It is a non, um, non stick on the top. So you can up to, I think 550 degrees, you can hot glue on it. You can uh, anything you want except for cut. And on the back, it is silicone. So it keeps it from moving once it's down. There's no tape holding this down, but it doesn't move. So I was the first one to come out with it, and I don't think I'm the first one anymore. Well, I'll always be the first one, but I don't think I'm the one, the, the only one anymore. But mine is the original, and it's super thick. Not paper thin at all, really thick. So I manufactured it because I couldn't find one that anybody made, so I had to make it myself. Now, I'm gonna let these dry because you need it to go from white to clear. Can you see some of it's already gone clear? I need it for, to go from white to clear. So you need to give about anywhere from 50. Well, this is already dry down here. It's just I need these to dry. Are you going to dry it with a heat tool? No, your glue will bubble. No, please don't do that. Just let it dry on its own and it will become tacky like this. Only not so tacky, but strong. This, this needs to just be tacky to use. To hold foil, it needs to have some strength behind it because with glitter, glitter I'm drizzling it on and then just moving it around. With foil, I'm asking it to grab the foil off the sheet and hold it to the image. It's got to take the little, the, 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 the foil off the liner because this is actually a piece of clear liner with foil on it. And when I use the foil, what will be left is a clear piece of plastic. So we need it to hold strong and you just can't get that with the glue pad. I had SMS girl Doris do a couple before I started so that, cause I don't know how to edit, sorry. I don't know how to do that time warp thing where you come back and poof, 
it's done. So I had SMS Girl Doris do some for me. I'm gonna move these and these. I'm gonna put this, let me just get some of this out of my way. So I can go. All right, so she's done a few of them for me. Ooh, this is the roses. Oh, and this one, they're all so pretty. They really are so pretty. Maybe I'll do the roses. Do I have a red foil out? No, I have a pink foil. Roses, roses, yep, roses, roses. Okay, I think I'm gonna start with the roses. And this one is the one I've been working on. I'm gonna move the two that I've been working on because maybe I can get back to those and show you. Maybe they'll be dry by the time I'm ready to go. And I'm gonna move this one here. See, that's what happens when you don't know how to edit. It is what it is. Okay, I've got my paper. Doris did this one. She brought it up to me just before I started doing the taping the class. So that would be about an hour ago. I'm going to cut my foil and let's use the pretty, should we use the pretty pink? Mm. I'm going to cut my foil. This is Couture Creations foil. You cannot use this with your minks. This is not a laminator foil. It is not a toner based foil. It's a heat activated foil, but we're not even going to use heat today. There is no go press and foil machine being used with this. I will tell you, I've got three bundles for you. The price is going up to $3 a roll, although it is 15 feet of foil. There is nobody who gives you so much foil for such a little price. And then I've got three bundles that I think we're doing for $10.99. You get six rolls for $10.99. Um, and no two bundles are have the same in them. All right, so I'm gonna lay this on top. And press it down. Now, you have a couple options. First option, grab your Big Shot machine. Grab your Spellbinder machine, grab your Cuddle Bug machine, what machine you got? Have it ready as if you're going to do a wafer die. Oh, I'm missing a cut plate. Holy smokes, artichokes. We were too efficient and put it away. Hold on. Cut plate, cut plate, cut plate. There we go. Oh, nope, that's not a cut plate. Okay, I'm back. So I got a, a pan, my, my exclusive one and a, they don't match, but that's okay. Usually I have a clear one, but okay, so. I need to have my, my sandwich as if I'm doing a wafer die. So if you're using your cuddle bug machine, however you build your sandwich so you can do a thin wafer die, that's what you need to do. If you're using your spellbinder machine, how, whatever sandwich it is so that you're able to do a wafer die, that's the sandwich you're gonna use. I'm gonna put down one plate. I'm gonna put down my foil and my stamped image with my um, with my duo gel, although it's really more like a paste. And I'm going to put down my other cut plate or do not cut plate. Since it's not gonna cut into it, it doesn't matter if it's a cut plate or not, just go for it. And I'm gonna roll it through. It's gonna roll through like butter. I mean, because there's no, there's no tension at all. It's not die cutting at all. All I'm doing is adding some pressure. That's all I'm doing is adding some pressure to that foil. Move it to the side. Now you can already see kind of where the stamped image is and how the duo is holding it. Don't know if I, oh yeah, it's there. And then when I pull, my 
image is now foiled. And it doesn't come off <laughs> at all. Not only that, you can now go in. It almost looks like you've embossed it. It does, it almost looks like you've embossed it. You can go in now and watercolor or color pencil or um, uh, Tim Holtz oxide inks because that foil is going to act as a resist. So pretty. Let's see, which one does she have over here? Okay, so this one, this one I played with and it's those beautiful leaves, but I only did half of it. So if I bring my foil back, and put my foil down. And you're saying, well, that's really great, Stacy. I love it, but I don't have a big shot machine. I don't have a die cutting machine. Okay, what do you have? You got a jar of glitter? You got a rolling pin? You got a brayer? What do you own where you're able to add the pressure that it needs to transfer that foil? You tell me what do you own. I don't want you to think you can't do this because you don't have a die cutting machine. That's all right. You've definitely got something circular. Let's see how I did. Gosh, I was, oh, my stay put. Well, that's even better. Should have done that from the first. <laughs> Stay put glue. Using it like a brayer. All right, let's see what we get. And I'm foiled. That one was better. I should have pressed harder. That one's better than that side. I didn't press hard enough. But do you think, do you think this one's done enough? Should we try it? Should we try it with the green? I don't know. Or maybe the gold? About the gold. Fifteen feet of foil, so you don't have to worry about being skimpy with your foil. So I don't know that I've let it sit long enough. Don't know that I don't. Let's take my my rolling pin here and see what we get because maybe you don't have a die cutting machine but you got a rolling pin or a brayer or a glue bottle and with the foil being as inexpensive as it is And we'll have the duo glue on a YouTube yummy. And then these stunning stamps. You think we should give it a whirl and see what happens? Trim it out. 
what do you think? Right? I didn't even use my big shot. Now, there are some places where I can see it didn't pick up. It is possible, and because it's just paper, that I might be able to take my green. I could use this green again. Oh well. Take my green and put it over the top. And this time, let's run it through the Big Shot machine and see what we get. Bring my machine over. My platform's set up for a wafer style die, one cup plate, my paper with my foil with the pretty side, decorative side up. My second cut plate and roll it on through and it will roll through like butter. There should be very little resistance at all. Roll it back if you want to. You're not die cutting. And let's see what happens. <laughs> now I've got green and gold going on. So pretty. So I wonder, I wonder if I put the gold, because this one didn't pick up that much on the side. I didn't use my roller. I, I started with the wrong roller. Should have been using my, I knew stay put glue was really good, but now it's even better. What if I put my gold on top of this one? <gasps> Should I put gold? Yeah. I have too many options of colors to play with. What if I put this on there? And I send it through with my big shot. Roll it through. Roll it back, because it doesn't hurt. And let's see if my gold picked up and filled in my spaces. Oh, it's so beautiful with the greens and the golds. And I didn't use a GoPress and foil machine. I didn't use um, a heat tool. I didn't use a laminator. Um, gosh, if you've got a rolling pin or a brayer, you probably you don't even need to use a uh, a big shot machine. But it definitely needs that pressure. Now it's just got a little bit of, and it's dry. A little bit of green, a little bit of gold. Let's move this off to my side. A little bit of green, a little bit of gold going on. Green, gold. You can do this. If you're a newbie, you can do this. If you've been crafting since dirt, you can do this. And if you're a long time crafter, you may already have the foils. You, you may already have them. You're already a head start. You need the duo glue that is made for um, heat or no heat. You cannot use the original duo glue that is made for heat only. This is the new stuff. You've got to have the new stuff. And it feels so rich and it looks regal and it, it, it's got this texture to it and it feels like you've heavy, heavy embossed it. I love it, but it took time to figure out. It took time to understand that you need to take your glue, you need to Put some on your craft mat. You need to take a 
little credit card or whatever it is that you have. I haven't used this one yet. It's just, it's just, well, I got a lot there. I can put half of this back. I've got way too much there. Ooh, put half of that back. Spread it around. You want it, is that my nail? You want it thin. but not too thin. Like I said, I could Venetian plaster now. Put that back. Press in. nice press and if it goes like oops if it moves no big deal you're not gonna try and get that that negatives up yet because I haven't figured out how to get that negative up yet oh I probably didn't have enough on that side hmm I'll move a little bit over here again one two three ABC that looks better put this down put my paper on it give a rub you can certainly scoop all of this back up and put it away for a later dime don't waste Rub, rub, rub. Pull up. And then let it sit. So I'm gonna let this one sit and I think, oh, that's my ginkgos or whatever they're called. I think this one is that one that Doris did. I think these two are the same. So I'm gonna move that over there. I'm gonna wipe down my, I'm gonna wipe down my craft mat. And let's take this one and let's use Ooh, what do I like? Maybe this orangey color? Or no, maybe this matte goldy color? Ooh, let's try this matte goldy color. Cut myself off a hunk. down, bring over my brayer, my rolling pin, my big shot machine, and let's send it on through. Send it on through. Roll all the way once. Now, if for some reason you're not getting the best impression, put a shim underneath it. It's the pressure that's making the difference. If, if my impression is coming out too light and I'm not getting the foil transferred as much as I want, not a problem. Just add another piece of paper underneath it so the pressure's a little bit higher, so it hits that roller a little bit higher. No problem, it's only paper. There are all my leaves. I wonder if I take that orange. So I've got an impression, but I wanna do a duel. Look at how pretty is that, right? I wanna do a duel. 
So let's do what I just said. I'm gonna take this orange and put this orange in there and see what I get. Or should I use a really, no, this is good. It's only paper. So if I put this over the top and I'm not getting as much of an impression as I want, I'm not getting that transfer as much as I want. It's a little light. It has nothing to do with so much um, the foil or the glue. It has to do with how much pressure is in your machine. Just take another piece of paper. I've got my cup plate. I've got here. I've got here. And I can either put this on top or I can put this on the bottom and just add a little shim. If you need, maybe it's not a, a sheet of cardstock, maybe it's a sheet of copy paper. All you have to do is adjust your pressure. How high is your sandwich and how, where is it hitting the roller? That's all this is. And it's still going to roll through like butter. Ooh, I definitely got an impression there. Holy smokes, artichokes. I can see that from here. Holy smokes. <sighs> oh my gosh, this is beautiful. Let's trim it out. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So where the gold stuck, the orange did not. Where there was a little tack left on top of the gold, the orange stuck. So do you have an old gift card? I bet you do. Do you have to use a craft mat? No, you can do it on glass. You just need something that you're able to clean up, that's all. And something that the glue is not going to absorb into. You can't use a piece of paper to spread your glue on. <laughs> because it's going to start absorbing into that paper. So something that is non-porous, you could use if you've got a clear plate from Ellison for your Big Shot machine that you've never used. Go for it. Well, even one that's slightly used, go for it. And now what you do with it, what you put in the middle is up to you. Okay, we did a lot, a lot, a lot today. We did, we, we just stamped. That's all we did. We, we used the beautiful stamps from Aladdin, their new doodlers, and we just, we just stamped with them to show you how to stamp. Then we took them and we started to play with glitter. I gotta see which way's up and which way's down. No, this way's up. Yeah, we started to play with glitter. And we used the Essentials glue pad to make that happen. Just the Essentials glue pad and micro fine glitter from Creative Expressions. I'm gonna leave a little bit of a border around this. I drizzled it on. I tapped it underneath with my fingers. I moved it with my fingers and it made no fuss, no muss, no mess, easy peasy. So pretty. It has to go tacky. The most important thing is that it go tacky. If it doesn't go tacky, it won't work. It will wipe right off. You'll put it on and it'll look beautiful and then you'll finish it and you'll be like, why, why did it wipe right off? Because you didn't give it enough time for the glitter or for the glue. 
to go tacky. It is the one time in your life you want to be a little more tacky than not. <laughs> Super important that you give it enough time to dry. This is all with the Essentials glue pad, the Doodler's stamps, and the Creative Expressions sparkle shakers, which is one of the last microfine glitters around. Then we took a jump, we took a huge leap, and we started to play with foils. Gosh, where did I put them? <laughs> oh, here, we started to play with foils. And we used the Duo Gel to make these work. No heat, just pressure and a little time. You have to give it a little time. See, like, this one came out good though, but maybe there's a few spaces, maybe I could go in there and try and see if I can get that to, um, to hold down again, but I got it wet. I don't know. Hmm. Do we try? I'm not one to stop to, to, to give up. So I'm just going to run this one through because I have to. I know half of you are like, can you just get to the samples? Yes, yes, I can. But did you not watch the beginning of this YouTube when I said I'm an A-type personality and I have to finish? Hence the reason I am lucky to still be married after 25 years. <laughs> He's not the lucky one, I am. And boy, if you don't know that I know that, trust me, I know that. All right, let's put it down. I left that little shim under there because I don't know if I'm gonna be able to make it have enough pressure or not now that it's been sitting there for quite a while. But all we can do is try, it's only paper. And then you can take and watercolor. Or, I mean, yes, you can go in there. Wait till you see what the girls have done. They've gone in there and they've watercolored these. Oh my gosh. They've used colored pencils with them. Oh my gosh. You don't have to use the glitter or the foil at all. I've got samples where we just colored them. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay, what are the odds? What, what, what's your guess that it, it worked or it didn't? Let's hear it. Come on. What are you saying? Yay, nay, maybe? See, I can tell it did something because I can see it. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay, that came out beautiful. Oh my gosh. The detail of the stamps is what makes it all work. You want to use a beautifully detailed stamp for that foil or that glitter to grab onto. I feel so sad that I got it wet. Uh-huh. That was a throwaway. Not really. It's never a throwaway. Look at how beautiful. I, gosh, I, I just love this. I love the two colors I picked, too. Happy day. All right. So we have done oodles. And hopefully you learn something that you might not have known. And really, if you've got a rolling pin, you just need something with pressure. Absolutely, you don't have to have a big shot machine or a die cutting machine. No. Okay, let me show you. Let's talk about the, 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 okay. So the Essentials Glue Pad is on a YouTube Yummy. The Duo Gel, oh, that I just stuck my fingers in. The Duo Gel, please make sure if you don't buy this from us, if you get it from your local mom and pop retailer, <laughs> make sure that it says heat or no heat. That is vitally important. Really, really important. So important. And then I've got the six stamps from um, Aladine, which I love each and every one of them. And when you see the samples, you'll understand why I had to have them. Needed the stamps was not so crazy about the sentiments, but that's between you and me. <laughs> right? 
This one looks so busy, busy, busy until you actually do it. I don't know where I put it, but that's one of the ones that I did. did. It looks so, oh yeah, see, it's this one. It looks so busy, busy, busy until you do it and you get that detail. <gasps> I thought, oh, it's just gonna be so busy. And I said, no, let's, let's just give it a whirl and see what happens. So, and then I've got these three as well. One, the roses, which was the last one that I did, where I did the foiling early on and then came back and did a second color over it. I've got the, I don't know if they're whatever they are. They're, I love them. They had them in the stencil and I loved them there too. And then the foliage, which also I did in the um, the gold, the soft gold and the copper. Oh, was the foliage. So these are the six that they've come out with. We have an I Want It All on them, or you can buy them individually. I want to say that they're um, $11.90, and then on a YouTube Yummies sale, you pick and choose whatever makes your heart happy. Just know that I believe we are the first in the United States to, to have them, and that may be for a little while. So there are the six. Then I've got all the colors of the sparkle shakers. What color glitters do you need to fill in your assortment with? If they're micro fine, remember that they're micro fine. That's super important. They're gonna work far better on a detailed stamp. These are all by Creative Expressions. We have the whole collection on sale for you. And like I said, I, I don't know if there's 12 or eight. No, there has to be two, four, six, eight, ten. 10. So there's gotta be at least 14 colors because that's what I'm looking at here and they're going to last you a lifetime. You saw how little I used. These are like a one-time purchase and you're never gonna need them again. Okay, and then the foil. So I've got three different packs of foil for you. I've got one that is kind of jewel tony, where we're doing all six rolls for $10.99 before price increase goes in effect. They would have retailed, if they, at the new price, they'll be $18, and we're doing them for $10.99. You get all six rolls. They're kind of, they're the same colors I was using today. The only colors I use today are used in, or found in um, the, the bundles that we've got for you. So retail would be $18, your price $10.99. These are the jewel tones. Then I did primary tones. And there's always six in the collection. So you've got the black, the orange, the blue, the red, the yellow, the green in a primary collection. And then I just did a gold and silver collection with different iridescence and the soft gold and the soft silver and then the bright gold and the bright silver. And so all collections have six of them in there, $10.99. If you've got foil, you're good. If you don't, this is a great time to get it. Okay, let's get onto the samples. <laughs> <laughs> are you ready because I am okay so I showed you this one in the beginning I go on up just a little bit I showed you this one in the beginning but then I have here That's done with the foil and the tropical leaf stamp. And then I've got here, oh my gosh, this is beautiful. And there's nothing here that I did that you cannot do. Here, done with just colored pencils. That's it, stamped and colored with colored pencils, nothing more. foil and a mica powder paint foiled and mica powder paint so pretty um stunning the tropical leaves done in, in that soft gold foil.
That is beautiful. Our cherry blossom just colored with markers. Just markers. Talk about an easy color. Here we've got stamped on top of eye zinc glaze. And here, only partially colored, stamped in a green, and then just a few of the leaves, just so they pop out. And then, Look at that. Right? So pretty. And this one too, just colored. Nothing more than, uh, looks like pencil. Oh no, this looks like, hmm, this looks like it was stamped with a reactive ink and then a and then a wet paint brush. That's what it looks like to me, stamped with a reactive ink and then a wet paint brush to kind of smear it together to add that color. Very creative. And then we have here. So you can see how we've utilized the center. We just covered it. Look at how beautiful is this. Oh, so pretty. And again, we just die cut and covered the center. Done with a foil. Here, done with the glitter. So this is done with the glitter. Look at the detail that you get and the sheen and the shine. You have options. One stamp, a million different techniques. And here, this one was just colored. How sweet is that? I love the cherry blossom. Well, I love all of the stamps. I had to have them. Actually, I didn't have to have them all. I want to say that there was 12 of them. And there were six that just made my heart sing. So I chose the six that I love the best. And here again with the glitter. What a great background stamp. You're gonna put something over the center anyway most often. And if you don't, then you stamp something in the center. It gives you the best of both worlds, these stamps. It leaves you a place to put a sentiment if you just want to stamp a sentiment. But then it also gives you the opportunity to make it look like it's a full background stamp. So you're getting two for one. Mm-hmm. Girls went crazy with samples. I love when they go crazy with samples. <laughs> look, it just stamped with a darker color, a tone on tone look. Simple, elegant, done. And with the foil and satin paper and <laughs> some coloring in there with a metallic, I bet that's a metallic watercolor. I bet that's the acetomo that they used. 
and then here a little bit more grunge a little bit more abstract but it's got that beautiful color to it and the beautiful floral stamps And this one was stamped and then an embossing folder put so that I hope you can see that the birds are sitting in the middle. Stamped in green and then an embossing folder where you've got birds on a wire sitting right there on a little swing. And here we go just colored again with markers. If that's where you're at and you're comfortable, that's okay. These are going to work great for you. And what I thought was going to be too busy is beautiful. I had to play with it and then because I got all all the samples in, I got all the stamps in and then I had to play with them to see which made my heart happy. And then the last two that I or do I have two or three? Oh my gosh, this is gorgeous. And then soft and elegant and sweet. Done with glitter. And then my last one, which is this one here that has all the foliage on it take a look at this is that regal and rich and beautiful and there's not even a sentiment on it and this was cut out of a piece of paper and just the soft gold foil on the background this card is yum and all the detail with that duo gel and the foils. All right, you guys, it is me. I'm gonna tilt on up and I'm gonna tilt on back. Oh, it's me, Stacy, scrapbooking made simple. What's gonna happen when I have to reopen the store and I can't do a two hour YouTube? <laughs> Some of you are gonna be saying, we cannot wait for that day. <laughs> Others are gonna be, what do you mean you can't do a two hour YouTube? <laughs> We'll see. <laughs> anyway, I hope you learned something today. I hope you had a good time. I hope your mind went oh, with all the possibilities that are out there for you using some things that may be new to you, some things you may already have, mixing them together to create something that you didn't know you could. Now, if you have a local retailer, I would encourage you to stop by to see if they've got the Essentials glue pad or maybe they have some of the foils, um, or even maybe the sparkle shakers. If you've got an independent retailer, go see them. If you don't, then come find us online. And I just wanna quickly say to the customer who sent me the email about copyright infringement, I know my things are on Allied Express. I know you can see my hands, and I know that they're using our samples, and I know that they have taken my designs and knock them off for a price that I can't even dream of. There's nothing I can do about it. For Allied Express and Alibaba, for those of us who actually put their heart and soul into the products they make, it's a hard pill to swallow. At the same time, I guess I have to be flattered that my designs were good enough to be knocked off. <laughs> you have to know going in when you're designing product, somebody is bound to knock you off. Is it right? No. Especially when they use my, 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 my images, my samples, the samples the girls have made to sell the product on their site. But there's nothing that I can do about it. They're in a country that, they, that doesn't respect copyright laws. So it's one of the reasons why my designs have to be one and done. One, to reorder them is very expensive. And two, by the time I would get the order in, they're already on Allied Express or Alibaba. For those of you who shop there, I ask that you just consider 
is the savings, and I understand it's a savings, I don't know that the product is the same quality, but if, if Lawn Fawn is your favorite manufacturer, or my favorite things, or memory box, or Sizzix, or spell binders, if they are your favorite manufacturers, but you're buying their products that are being knocked off on those websites, eventually your favorite manufacturers will no longer be there. They won't be able to compete. So I ask that you just keep that in mind and I wanna say thank you to the nice customer who was appalled at this. <laughs> she sent screenshots. I know, and it warms my heart that you thought enough of me to send me that email. All right, it's me, Stacy, Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com, and I will see you all next week. Bye, everybody.